Hello guys, uh, welcome to another video. Uh, someone asked me to do full game commentaries, uh, or so that I should do them, and I don't know if they meant watching over replays or just playing and commentating, but uh, I haven't done either one of those in a really long time, so I figured maybe I would do one just for kicks, I guess. Since, uh, you know, you guys don't really get to see me actually play very often, since uh, my videos really uh, aren't like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. This is a Diamond 1 game. It's like mid-Diamond 1, uh, probably around like 50 LP. Um, and this is yeah, me playing Thresh. I've been playing a lot more Thresh lately, and my Thresh is like 20 times better than it was a week ago, I would say. I've been watching a lot of uh, replays of Mad Life play, just to like pick up on the, the like little differences that he does that other players don't do. And I've also uh, yeah, just been practicing him a lot, and he went from like... Uh, Okay, well, I used to have, like, 10 games on him, and my win rate was, like, 20%. And now I have, like, 32, and I'm at 50%, I think. So, considering I was, like, negative 8 in wins, uh, I've actually been having a pretty high win rate on Thresh lately. So, uh, anyway, let me just rewind so I can talk about the slaying phase while I'm not rambling on about my Thresh win rates. Win rates. So coming into lane, I notice I have two more health pots than Janna, or yeah, two more health pots than Janna. So right away, I just want to play super aggressive, go up for the backwards play, exhaust him immediately, and pretty much what I'm doing this is yeah, I'm taking a lot of damage, but I'm also forcing them to play like in this area over here, and I am rolling health pots, so I'm gonna heal anyway. Now I just want to keep playing aggressive and force them out of the lane, so we have uh, level advantage. As you can see, we have like way more minions because they've been focusing all their attacks on me. And now here I go for a hook, hit it, play backwards, he's forced to a barrier, he takes a lot of damage here, and forced to his health pot. And they're, they, at this point, they've already lost the lane. Just by like momentum of how bot lane works, uh, they've, they've lost so much pressure at this point just from me playing aggressive. And you see, I, I've blown all my health pots, but I'm at full health now, and they have like nothing. Uh, this Lucian is pretty screwed. Go for backwards flare right here. That's probably one of the one of the biggest things that I picked up is uh, you never well you usually don't want to just walk or try to go for a blind hook unless like you're mind gaming your opponent so bad that they're like mind fucked at that point. Um, you usually want to try to go for a backwards flay first, and uh, flay is like. A much bigger range than a lot of people think. I think I can go for another hook here. This is... Uh, I'll rewind so I can explain my thought process behind this. So there's a few different types of hooks that you can do and this is this is like uh, the classic uh, mind game right here. It's pretty much uh, you're, the opponent is thinking that you're gonna th you're gonna lead them with it so they kite forward so you throw the hook in front of them because you're predicting that they're going to uh, try to avoid it. So like you see right here, I throw it right in front of him and he tries to kite into it and gets hit by it. So that's just one of the... Uh, unfortunately I missed my play right there. If, if I did not miss my play there, he would have died 100%. So uh, yeah, I said sorry right there, that's why I stopped. <laughs> I said sorry to Sivir because I felt bad for missing that kill. Um, but anyway, uh, just keeping pressure up here. I, I'm kind of afraid of Zen, but I see him in the middle right here, so it's fine. And we just keep pr pressuring right here. If we keep shoving into them, they're going to be forced to back at some point. Go for backwards way here into hook. I think she is forced to flash right here. Yeah, she gets away though, which is unfortunate. John is showing a bit too strong. But so we're just keeping up the pressure. And yeah, uh, right here I remember I'm, I'm waiting for uh, 
Hook costs 80 mana at rank 1, and Flay costs uh, 40, is it? Uh, 60. Okay, I was almost right. But yeah, I'm just like hovering around the mana so I can uh, do both of them. And I think we actually get a kill on him here. I think. Because I'm just like waiting for my mana. And I go here. Oh, I miss. So he was saving his E there. I kind I try to do the same thing, but he learned this time. So like, th that's basically the mind game. Is now that he knows that I'm trying to do it, I have to predict what he thinks I'm gonna do. So now that he's like doing that, you'll see how I adjust my hooks. And that is precisely what I did right there. Uh, so like I was saying, he knows that I'm gonna. Or he thinks that he knows what how I'm gonna hook because I've hooked in front of him twice in a row now. So now I mix it up and I just hook directly on top of him because he's not gonna juke because he thinks I'm throwing it in front of him. So right when she's last saying this, I start it up and I throw it directly at him. So like he, I can guarantee you he is mind fucked right now because. He doesn't know if I'm going to throw it right at him, or in front of him, or behind him, because the first time he thought I was going to throw it behind him, the second time he thought I was going to throw it in front of him, and then the third time he thought I was going to throw it in front of him again, and I threw it just directly at him. So that's basically uh, what you want to do on Thresh in a nutshell. You just want to keep them guessing, and make them extremely... <laughs> you just want to make them really scared of you, is basically what uh, the gist of it is. And you do that by just mixing up your uh, hook patterns. Levi gets killed here for no reason and gives Arlena XP from assists. Vi tries pretty hard to throw this game, that's for sure. Uh, anyway, back in the lane now. Miss a hook. I get backwards play. And you see, he has no health pots here. So, like, I'm trading with him and it looks like I'm losing the trade, but since I have health pots, it's fine. Like, I don't really care. Uh, and also have the, um, whatever this gold item is called, Nomad's Medallion, so I have a lot of HP regen also. That's not how it goes, unfortunately, like double flay. And you, you, don't, you really don't have to hit hooks, it's just uh, a bonus, basically. Your hooks are there to intimidate, and uh, if... If you don't hit it, it's not a big deal, as long as you're keeping lane pressure up by hooking a lot. You want to keep hooking to make them afraid to move up. I won't bother explaining that hook, it's just pretty standard. I, th I think I predicted it, uh... I predi predicted him to kite, or like, to try to avoid it, and he did, so... Anyway, moving on. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, this is where Vi tries to throw the game right here. And we go for this really bad dive. And Zen does a whole lot of damage. I missed my hook. I think I actually could have saved. Uh, I could have saved over there. I don't think we would have had the coordination to do it in a solo key game, but let me just explain like what I could have done. Uh, fast forward a little bit. So right here, I could have lantern the sivir. I could have lantern the sivir and then moved over here and fla flashed over the wall right here. If I flashed over the wall and she took that lantern, she would have lived. Uh, because I would have flashed over the wall and then she would have took the lantern over the wall. So. I don't know if we would have the coordination to do that. I mean, she did click my lantern, so obviously uh, it, it could have worked. But And then they would have just chased up anyway. So I don't know if... I don't know if it would have saved her or not, but uh, uh, that could have been a play that I could have done. So yeah, that was pretty bad. Like, they threw... Uh, oh yeah, towers aren't showing up because I already watched this replay to make sure that it was actually working. Because my low replay has been really screwed screwed up lately, so that's why the towers aren't showing up on the minimap. But um, anyway, that was pretty big lane throw right there, as you see, Lucian is level 7 even though we're shitty on him. Right here, uh, I should have flayed, 
forwards there, but it ends up not really mattering. Server goes a little bit too aggressive there, I try to get the kill on Janna and doesn't end up getting it. But uh, I'm still full health, which means that I can pretty much bully them out of the lane. The thing about Janna's support is that she pretty much doesn't do anything in lane, because she has very minimal CC, uh, she has no sustain, she has no damage, uh, no pushing power, um, bad auto attack range. Pretty much everything about Janna is just terrible in laning phase, which makes it, which is why it's so easy for me to bully uh, Lucian through the early laning phase. But either way, I'm, I'm able to bully him out right here because he stayed with low HP, and uh, if he gets hooked here, he's definitely gonna die. Oh, that was close. Doesn't get hooked though. So right here, I see Zed coming down. So I run and let her finish off the turret so she can take my lantern. Um, I think we end up losing tower off this anyway because four people come bottom, but that's okay. When you're in this type situation, don't even try to defend this. Like, th there's no point. Uh, they could just die us and kill us, and uh, because Karma had to run middle to save mid tower, uh, Renekton is pushing top tower, and you see that he's going to get that. Plus, we also remember got this tower off of it, so we got two towers for only uh, one. So in that situation, if four people come bottom, just back off. Don't uh, like. A lot of lower lower elo players would sit on the tower and try to defend it, and then after they die and get dove, they would be like, "Oh my god, what is my team doing?" <laughs> uh, sometimes your team is going to be doing weird stuff, and you just have to, you know, just back off and let it happen. Which in that situation, we actually ended up getting a better chair of it anyway, so it's not even a big deal. Um, I'm fast forward a bit here. I'll just keep it on myself. I'm just roaming around right here. Uh, I try to roam a lot on Thresh, or on supports in general now, because that's kind of the meta. And I see Sivir is having a little trouble bottom, so I figured I will go down there, but she blue pills. So I'm just running around, kind of aimlessly at this point, looking for something to do, trying to make plays. Uh, this is just pretty much harass. Nothing really major happening right here. And I guess I see something play that can be made down here. And I'm roaming down. Come up behind them with no wards. Missed my hook right here. But I flash forward. Get Lucian with the flay even though John knocks me back. So he gets up from that. And my team is able to pick up these two kills. Throw out the lantern. But it takes it to the out of tower range. And this is a pretty clean tower kill. We do lose top for this I believe. And we might even lose mid for this. But we got two kills out of it. And we also got a second tier tower versus a... Uh, tier 1s. If they even kill these towers, I'm not sure if they do or not. I'm assuming they do based on the HP that they have, but who knows. Let me pick up a blue up, uh, blue up here also. Yeah. So I pick up this blue buff for... I think we get chased out of blue here actually. I don't know. We just take it for free. Get out really fast and go to look to make a play on Zed here. We do end up losing both of our towers, which is kind of sucky. Kinda sucky. Huh. Well then, haven't said that since I was in like 6th grade. Anyway, flying backwards here, throw lantern back for Ari. Uh, try to land hook here, it's pretty hard. I actually tried to predict his shadow right there, but I didn't think he would go like from here to here. Oh, uh, whoops. I can't ping. I thought he would like go from here to here. But um, yeah, I ended up not predicting his shadow, but that's okay. We're actually behind in gold right now, which is really strange because when I was playing this game, I thought we were like really far ahead. Um, and at one point in this game, we actually get pretty far behind in gold, uh, which again is pretty strange considering I thought we were just snowballing this game really hard. But anyway, uh, again, I'm just roaming around. I picked up my uh, I didn't pick up my ability boots yet, but I did pick up Australia's. Uh, just to try to make more plays. Oh yeah, I should talk about, um... I'll talk about my item build at the end of the game. Uh, because I know some of you are probably like, Oh, you're not building what you said you build in your video, or whatever. Oh, this is the fight where we get shit on. So yeah, I'll explain the item build at the, the end of the video, and why I want these items. Uh, but anyway, this is the fight where we get absolutely destroyed. Um, 
we go super aggressive on this tower to try and take it down. I miss my hook, and we're grouped up so much here, and we all get hit by the Zenol. I just get blown up. Uh, Zed gets to go on server for free here. I'm off to the side, but I'm not really doing anything. Uh, Zed is just destroying Sifra over here. Gets out to the shadow, goes back on the buy. Uh, definitely a really unnecessary general actually saves Vi right there. And we are uh, just trying to retreat out of this. I think I, I should have boxed right here also, but um, I end up boxing like right here, which is already too late at that point anyway. And well, yeah. This is the point where we're like really far behind in the game. Well, not really far behind, like 2k. It's still pretty far behind for 18 minutes, so. Not like insurmountable, but you know, it's a, it's a pretty big lead. And also, well, the thing you have to keep in mind is that Zen is a very like early game champion. He falls off really hard late game. So when you're running a champion like that, you kind of have to keep that in mind, like, like they may, oh, oh yeah, this is really weird right here, they're like all in our jungle, uh, we don't really know what's going on, that play was way too late, and we're just trying to figure out what to do here, uh, I think we end up going bottom and catching them, yeah, I pull Vi over the wall of Lantern, uh, Vi, <laughs> that was pretty embarrassing, if I land hook on Karma here, play back Zen as well, and I'm just going to throw a lantern in here, probably the shield. Yep, throw in the lantern to the shield. It doesn't take it for some reason, but uh, it does survive. And I think we blow several and like way overextend for this. Yep, and we end up taking their blue. This is the blue where we get chased out of. Uh, I'm pretty scared at this point because uh, the reason I flashed it was I was, I didn't, I couldn't see like this area. I thought Zin was maybe going to jump over the wall or something. But uh, in hindsight, I could have just used Shirelia's to get out, um, which I just used right there. But I ended up blowing my Flash. Flash is not that important on Thresh. It's it's pretty strong, but um, I mean it's not like an anti Flash, but it's still you don't want to blow it for no reason, you know, because um, Flash flays are really really powerful. Anyway. Uh, Continuing to roam around here. When you're playing Thresh, you just want to keep roaming and look to make picks with your uh, death sentence. And yeah, he's not like. I mean, he he, he is a good at team fighting champion. Oh, I land a play on Zin here, and we going for this. Alright, let's slow this down. See exactly what's happening. I'm I'm tanking the Coling right here for my team. Which I guess is pretty good. I throw a box down on Karma just to get her slowed and do damage to her. We're gonna burst her down really fast. Not sure if we're able to get anything else off of this. Let's fast forward a little bit. We're chasing them. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're gonna catch any of them. That, that John has speed buff on her passives. Oh, we do. Uh, I mean, that, that sense wasn't really anything, it was just me falling off on the Renekton stun, but yeah. Yeah, that, that team fight is a perfect example of what I was just talking about. Uh, Thresh isn't the best team fighting champion. Oh, this is where we overextend. Catch the play here on Zed, and he goes down instantly. But uh, at this point, we should have just back. Death timers are up. John and Kam are getting up right now, and they, it's a 4v5. But look at Vi's health. Look at my health. Ari's health. We don't have our ultimates up. And uh, yeah, we should have back out at this point. But we decide to go really aggressive, and we just get destroyed right here. I think they even get a Baron off of this. Or no, they attempt to do a Baron. But yeah, we get chased out here. They're gonna go to Baron. Vi just decides to be a hero. He's able to stop the Baron. So we stop that, and then I have no vision right here, so I'm gonna look really dumb. But uh, I wanted to ward to see if they were doing Baron, because we had no vision. But I end up getting caught here too, which is pretty bad. But um, 
at the same time, I kind of had to check, but I also could have ran up and warded, or like ran up this ramp, up here, and up to ward. But um, I I checked too early. I should have. Yeah, that was pretty bad. But I also just really wanted to check. Anyway, we're defending Baron here. And oh. This is where Renekton is probably going to be unkillable. Because, you know, bruisers are overpowered. Oh, wow, that was a good flash. But Renekton is going to chase us down. Yeah, this is where Renekton just lives forever, never dies. He's able to just tank in here. I'm coming out with my mo mobility boots, Vi is here. Uh, Renekton is just doing tons of damage to the Sunfire Cape and base damage. And he's never going to die because he's Renekton. And I tried a lantern to catch uh, John here, but they already been jump the kill on Zen. I think I flash right here, and she shows at the perfect moment and just barely escapes. Oh, I was pretty sad about that one. But here we're gonna start a Baron. I ward over the wall to make sure we can see if anyone comes over. I don't have a pink ward, unfortunately, but if I did, I would have placed it down. Or if I had my sweep prep, I would have used that. But, uh,. Ari catches a good charm here on Zed. We get the death sentence right afterwards into a flay, and he just gets chunked. Oh, the range on that! Oh, that was brutal. I didn't even notice that the first time I saw. Anyway, we're gonna pick up this Baron for free. And yeah, that was a really weird turn of events, but we somehow came out on top by three K gold. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's solo queue for you. But honestly, like I was saying, like when I was playing this game, I thought we were so far ahead the entire game. But uh, apparently we were not. But now we are after the Baron. And right now I'm just telling my team, let's group up, group up, group up as five and go for this inhibitor, spamming pings on it. And right here, this is this is like the, the series of I like pretty much turn into mad life at the end of this video right here. At, or the end of this game and just land pretty much every hook so this one I think I fake yeah I, I predict that he's gonna try to dodge it so I throw it and oh th this is like no th this is the uh oh, I've rewinded again I'm sorry so th this is another trick that I haven't used yet in this game uh the trick is that you act like you're gonna uh hook someone else and then or act like you're gonna hook someone and then you hook someone else because Thresh's hook doesn't reveal the way that your hook is going until it's already out so you notice like look at look where I'm facing right here I'm gonna run towards Karma like I'm gonna hook her and then I hook Zed so I'm facing Karma and then the hook goes to Zed he has no idea that I'm gonna hook him until it's already out so we get a hook on him here we'll slow down the team fight Renekton's just gonna tank up everything Will's ultimate I throw my shield on him and right here, I'm just going to run straight to Lucian because I want to zone him out of the fight. Right here, I'm zoning him out with my potential play. Right after Zed ults, I run over here to exhaust him. He gets exhausted, teleports back. And I'm just pretty much protecting the carry right here. And at this point, they can't really do much because we have Baron, you know. And uh, Baron is strong. And Renekton is unkillable. I think I do the same thing right here. Act like I'm going to hook him and I hook Karma instead. You see how big of a mindfuck that is? Uh, this is probably the highest success rate strategy for hooking. Uh, no, no one ever expects it. It's like, seriously, it's a mindfuck. But um, anyway, that's what Thresh is all about, just mind games. And we're taking down these towers. And right here, I'm pretty sure I hook him again. Yep, slow it down. And I just hook directly on top of him because he's going to try to juke. And he gets hit by it. And he goes down. Anyway, I think this is the end of the game. I got another hook on Dawn here. At the very end. Uh, Alright. Anyway, that's it. Uh, oh god, this was so rambly. Oh man, I talked way too much in this video. Oh, starting items. Um. Okay, so in my video I said that you should never start with a gold generation item, which 
I truly believe is still the best option. But the the thing is is I don't know how to explain it, but basically my my starting items video is my thoughts based on uh, the jungler being smart. <laughs> so that sounds really arrogant maybe or really dumb justification but basically what I mean is uh, if the end if the bot lane starts with no wards and the jungler can gank so easily because supports don't have an escape so supports are like free kills in a 3v2 situation you just CC him and then jungler comes in CC CCs him also and then he just gets dumped like there, there's nothing a support can do if they don't have wards so but the thing is, in solo queue, for some reason, no junglers gank bottom. Like, I don't understand. It, it makes no sense. Uh, like, even in this video, you saw Zen never came bottom except to counter gank Vi. Even though we were dumping on them the entire laning phase. And, like, literally on top of their tower. And we had no wards. All we had were our uh, totems or whatever. So, like, if the... If the jungler is gonna disrespect me by not ganking my lane, then I'm gonna disrespect him by not buying wards. Is pretty much my philosophy, or like my reasoning. But against a jungler that, uh, if I know their jungler is gonna like play well, then I'm gonna buy wards. Uh, or if they have like a really gank heavy jungler like Elise, then I usually buy wards also. But um, in solo queue, I usually just start with the gold generation item because it's just pure disrespect is pretty much what it is. Um, like I, I don't respect that they're going to be smart enough to gank bottom lane when I have no wards. Which sounds really arrogant, but uh, as you saw in this video, it's <laughs> it's, it's just how the junglers play now. I don't, it doesn't make sense to me, but um, that's, if that's how they want to play, then I'll get more gold. Um, I was also for masteries. I was running zero twenty one nine this game, and yeah, I think that's all I want to say. Uh, if you guys want me to do more like replay videos like this, just let me know. Um, then I'll do them. This is probably really long, probably like twenty minutes or something by now. Twenty seven minutes, holy! I bet you no one watched this long. Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys for the next video. Goodbye.